Jimmy Carter trusted the justice and truth of God and confronted the United States and the rest of the world about our narcissistic kind of value system that wastes and pollutes the air and the water and the land and treats people like stuff and objects and violates human rights. And so what do we so-called religious conservative folks do? We just have voted him out of office. He elected a guy who bankrupted the nation and then we build buildings in the name of Ronald Reagan and named an airport after him. Trusting God, betting on God, so to speak, can be troublesome because conventional wisdom places ultimate trust in self-centered and self-directed power and pursuits rather than in the purposes and the power of God. And people like Jeremiah are weird. They're strange. They're fanatics because they place ultimate trust. They bet on God not on their self-centered and self-directed and self-righteous kind of notions of power and purpose and pleasure. Notice, secondly, that betting on God means betting on hope. People who live according to the grace and justice and truth of God are often hard to figure out. They do love strangers like family, so when a fellow like Hannah shows up and we're having enough trouble on our own, they figure out ways to try to help them. Hmm. They forgive their enemies, even though the people around say, why in the world do you do that? They actually stand up for people who can't give them anything and can't do anything to protect them. Why would you do that? They actually do strange stuff. They're just weird kind of folk. Because they build their lives on God's promises and purposes, they don't bow and scrape to the usual bosses and bullies in life. And so they see things that other people don't see. They hear things that other folks don't hear. They know stuff other folks don't know. They're just kind of weird. Which is why Jeremiah had to explain to King Zedekiah, this whole passage we read about in chapter 32 is actually Jeremiah explaining to King Zedekiah why he bought the land. You understand, Zedekiah is confused. I got you under arrest, dude, because you are walking around telling people that our society is being invaded and going to be conquered, which means that all the land is worthless. Now here you are in jail buying land. What's up? I don't figure this. You need to explain something to me, Jeremiah. If we're going to go into exile, why are you in the land buying business? And so Jeremiah says, uh, let me tell you, king. The Lord told me. Now, that's a strange answer. You understand that? That's the answer. Why did you forgive him? The Lord says so. Uh, why did you help that person? Because the Lord's strange answer. But notice something. Jeremiah gave that answer because he was betting on something other than the trouble that he had predicted. He was betting on a promise of hope. Jeremiah said, Hanamel's offer actually was confirming that God had said something to me. God told me Hanamel was going to show up. And God sent Hanamel to show up to confirm something. He had already told me about something else. God had told me that he was going to restore Judah after he had you run over. And Hanamel was proof. God says, to prove to you what I'm talking about, I'm going to send your broke cousin Hannah Mill <laughs> to come and show up when you are at your lowest point. And Hannah Mill is going to be broke. He can't get you out. And he's going to come and ask you to bail him out. Now, Jeremiah, if you will bet on me, you'll buy his land. Why? Because even though you don't have a wife, even though you don't have children, even though you have nobody to inherit the land to, Hanamel has somebody. That's ancestral property. If you keep it in the family, one of these days, family folk going to come back. 
So buy the land. 